Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lauren. I'm a member of the Different Strokes team, and I want to start this session by thanking you for being here with us this afternoon. I'd also like to extend a huge thank you to our sponsors, Bolt, Bird and Kemp, who have made this conference possible. Now, we're in for a session of Survivor Yoga with Anna this afternoon that I'm really looking forward to. Hopefully you have what you need for the session. We did send an email, but I'll go through the now just so you can check. So you need a yoga mat or a non-slip surface, a chair, preferably metal, plastic or wooden, like a dining room chair, not with cushions. So the chair optional. You can use this for the whole class if you would like to do it seated or if you're able to do some of the standing postures, you can use the chair to sort of steady yourself as a standing aid. You'll also need a, a thick cushion, just like a pillow. I don't know if you can see what Anna's got there, but a pillow that you use in bed is. is um, you've got a few minutes now while I'm chatting. Go and get it or if you need to shout someone to bring it. During the session, we probably won't be using the chat function too much because we'll be in the zone with Anna and doing the poses that she sets for us. However, you can use the chat section now, uh, now or at the end of the session. To do this, if you're new to Zoom, you just need to scroll your mouse to the bottom of the screen and select chat. So I always like to know where people are watching us from or anything you wanna share, feel free to type that in now. We also have the Q&A function. So towards the end of the session, we'll do a short Anna. I just wanna reiterate that Anna is not a medical professional, so we won't be able to answer medical questions, but we will be able to answer questions about, yeah, well, Anna will, I don't know much about yoga, but Anna will answer questions about yoga. And as a survivor herself, if you've got any questions about her experience as a survivor who teaches and uses yoga. The session is being recorded, but please be assured, the only people visible are myself right now and then Anna for the remainder of the sessions. Now I can see we've got someone here from Chicago, Anna, Kent, Newmarket, Stoke-on-Trent, so you're sort of zooming in from everywhere, which is brilliant. Now the sessions will come up onto our YouTube channel in the next few weeks and I will out to anyone who's not made it today and anyone who is here with us today if you'd like to repeat this. Now, enough of me, on to the reason we're all here. Anna was practicing yoga for about a decade, and in order to share that passion with others, she trained and became a yoga in 2020. Sadly, just seven months later, she had a stroke aged 35 in 2021. Anna strongly believes that her yoga practices, mindset and her mental health throughout her recovery, and today a session that she hopes benefits you as well. So over to Anna, enjoy the session, everyone. Thanks, Lauren. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be doing this session. So as Lauren said, there's a few things that we need for our practice. So as you can see, I've got my stuff laid out here. So if you need any extra time to go and grab anything, like I say, I've just got a metal chair here. Um, I'm going to be doing all of the postures on this chair. I'll be right here alongside you all so I'll be doing it all with you so I'm here to look after you don't worry so I've got my chair that I'll be sitting on I'll also be doing a bit of standing just to show you a, a couple of different things and um, this session is really about feeling into your body so as we look at yoga in the west it's kind of very much posture based and you might see people with their foot on their head and I, that's not my type of yoga at all so don't worry I won't be asking you to do any of that um so it's the type of yoga that I teach is really about finding some safety within your body as when I had my stroke it really felt unsafe in my body um and my yoga practice really helped to bring me back to myself so I'm hoping that this session will be a benefit for you all and so let's get started um if you wanted to if you're using the ground and you're not using a chair you can come down into a lying down position now so you can lie down on your mat and you can have the legs out long or the knees bent and the feet flat on the mat so it's your choice if you're using a chair you can just come to sit in your chair 
and lean back into the chair. So we're going to take a few minutes here. So allow your body to settle wherever you are. If you're lying down, if you're sitting in the chair, allowing yourself to settle. Allow your breath to settle. So feel your body as it releases. So you can feel your body releasing into the ground if you're lying down or feeling the release into the back of the chair. If it feels comfortable for you, you can close your eyes or drop your gaze. So just taking this time to notice how your body feels. Notice how your breath is feeling this afternoon. So bringing your awareness into your body. And what do you notice about how your body feels this afternoon? I'd like you to be curious about how your body feels. But I'd also like you to bring some compassion and kindness towards yourself and how your body feels. So when we notice how our body feels, we do so without judgment. So remember that this time is just for you. So this is time is your space. This allows you to settle your body, to check in with yourself. And so now if you're lying on your back, if you bring the right knee into your chest and then hold on to the back of your thigh. So if you're seated in the chair, take the right leg out long. So you stretch the right leg out in front. You can take hold of the back of the leg and lift the back of the leg off the chair slightly. And now for both sets, so if you're on the floor or if you're on the chair, begin to just give a gentle rub down the back of your leg. So we're just massaging through the back of the leg. And if this is not accessible for you, if it feels too much of a struggle, you can always, if you're on the chair, you can always just bring the heel back down and you can lift yourself forwards in the chair and just give yourself a little gentle massage. So in circles or rubbing up and down, whichever feels more comfortable for you 
in your body softening. So gentle massage. Releasing the back of the thigh and noticing how it feels to be doing this. And now just holding on to the back of the thigh. So releasing the movement, but holding on to the back of the thigh still. Taking some movement with the foot now. So the right foot circling through the ankle. So just making circles, some circles with the foot. And we can do really small circles. And let's reverse the direction. And again, this can be done with the heel on the ground. Make it easier on the legs than the hips. And now let's point and flex the toes. So point and flex. And again, whatever range of movement you have, even if it's just moving the toes, just gentle movement. Pointing and flexing. And now we'll release that leg, bring the foot back down. And we'll do the same on the other side. So take a breath. If you're on the ground, bring the knee in towards the chest and hold on to the back of the thigh. And again, if you're seated, you're going to take the leg out long. And we're massaging down the back of the leg. Gentle movement. Noticing how this feels. And it might feel completely different on this side. Know that we're not symmetrical. So nothing's going to be the same from one side to the other. Gentle movement. And then holding onto the back of the thigh. Again, we'll take the movements with the ankle. So we'll circle through the ankle. We'll circle in the ankle. And reverse the direction. So go the opposite way. Notice how that feels. And then we'll point and flex the toes. Point and flex. Gentle movement. And release the foot back down. And just take a pause, take a breath here and notice how your legs feel, how your hips feel. Taking a pause and a breath. Now, if you're on the ground, I'd like to invite you to come around into a seated position. So coming into a seated position on the ground can be, you can sit cross legs if that's comfortable for you. If it's not, you can have your legs out long. The knees can be bent, whichever feels more comfortable. You can always lean against a wall as well. You don't have to sit upright in the middle of a mat. So you can sit against your sofa or a wall. So find a comfortable space. So we're going to find a space that's comfortable so that we can sit and breathe. If you're in the chair, push yourself back into the chair. Lean back into the chair. And again here we can Close the eyes or drop the gaze, whichever is more comfortable. Bring one hand to the chest, one hand to the belly. So 
focus on your breathing. Can you feel the rise and fall of your chest? The rise and fall of your belly? As your breath comes and goes. Focusing on how your breath feels this afternoon. So we're going to bring some breath and movement together now. So releasing the hands down. And if you have anything directly behind you, I would advise you just to scoot away slightly so that you've got a little bit of space behind just to move our arm. And I'm gonna demonstrate what we'll do first because there's a few different options for you depending on your level of mobility and how your arm movement is. So we're going to inhale and open the arm, lift the chest. And now the head just lifts slightly towards, your gaze is towards where the wall and the ceiling meet. So we're not flinging the head back, we're lifting. And then on the exhale, we round through the spine and we drop the head. We give ourselves a hug. So if there's, uh, mobility there on the left, say on your left arm, say, and you can't move this very well. Move it as much as you can. If you can't move it at all, I would advise you to visualize the movement of the arm because that can also help with creating new pathways in the brain. So the visualization really helps as well. So you can always just do the one arm, inhale and the exhale. Okay, so let's begin. So we'll take an inhalation. We'll open, lift, and on the exhale, round through the spine, drop the head, give yourself a hug. And now move at your own pace here. So move with your breath rhythm. So your next inhalation will open you and your exhale will close you. So inhale to open. Exhale to close, working at your own pace. Gentle movements. Notice how it feels to give yourself a hug, that feeling of touch. Inhale as you open. Uh, exhale, so round and close. We'll do one more inhalation, one more exhalation. And as we exhale this time, we'll hold the hug, drop in the head and hold here just to notice how it feels, that hug offering ourselves the kindness, the compassion, And release in the arms down. Release in the arms. So the next set of postures we're going to do is some stretches to the side of the body, some twists into the torso as well. So bring the left hand down 
the left hand comes down to the side of the chair or can place the left hand onto the mat if you're seated on the ground. So the left hand comes down. The right arm is going to either lift up if there's that mobility there, or we can keep it down at the side. So either lift or keep it down at the side. And we lift out of the side body here as we take a gentle lean to the left. And notice how it feels down the side of your body. So down the side. Notice how it feels. Breathing nice and deep and long. And releasing the hand down. Going back to center. We'll do the other side. So the right hand comes down this time. So either onto the chair or the mat. And again, we can lift or we can keep the hand down as we lean over to the right. So it's just a gentle stretch here. There's no need to force. Even in the side of your body. And lifting back to center. So this next one will bring the arms out long. So if you can bring the arms out long, if not, again, the arm can be in the just into your lap. We're going to turn the torso. So from the torso is where we're going to twist from. So we're twisting to the right. And the head stays center. We don't twist the head. So it's really gentle movement here. We're going from the core muscles. So pulling in at the core. And back to center. And we'll go over to the left. And lifting through the crown of your head. Go back to center. And we'll do one more on each side. So the right side again. And back to center and over to the left. And then back to center and bring the arms down. Give a little roll through the shoulder. Gentle movement. Noticing how that feels. And if you're on the ground now, I'd like to invite you to come into an all fours position. So a kneeling position, so hands and knees. So hands are gonna be beneath the shoulders or just slightly in front if there's any wrist issues. The knees will be beneath the hips. So an all fours position if you're on the ground. And if you're seated, we're gonna stay where we are. So if you're on the ground, I'd like you to widen your knees, bring the toes to touch if you're on the ground. So widen the knees. And you may want your pillow or a blanket to put between the back of the thighs and the knees here, if you've got any knee issues, because we're going to sit back onto the heels. So the sitting back onto the heels and the forehead will drop down. I'll just show you a quick demonstration. And the forehead will come down so into a child's pose. And if you're on the chair, we're going to grab our cushion. This is where we get comfy. So I'll grab our cushion. I'm just going to fold mine in half so it gives a bit of extra height. Bring the hands onto the cushion and rest the forehead down. So rest in the forehead down. Into our child's pose here. So 
So just notice how this feels within your body. Notice how your breath feels in this moment. And slowly and gently, we're going to lift ourselves back up. Going back up to seated, if you're on the chair. If you're on the ground, I'd like to invite you now to come to a standing position. So I'm going to demonstrate what we're going to do next. And I'll demonstrate the standing position first. So I've got my yoga mat lengthways. So I'm going to come to the back edge of my yoga mat. So what I'm going to do is walk forwards to the front of my mats. But we're going to walk mindfully. We're going to slow the movement down. So this can be quite challenging for our balance when we slow movements down. So we might be OK normally walking, but slowing down can, can really um, help us to get that better balance. And you can use a wall to stabilise yourself or you could use your use a chair or any surface that you've got nearby. And you can always have the arms out either side as well to get your balance a little bit better. Ground through the feet. You can have the arms out to the side or you could bring them into prayer at the chest, it's your choice. So what's gonna happen first is the right foot will step forwards, the heel will come down and then the rest of the foot. And then we'll step forwards with the left foot, the heel, then the rest of the foot. And we move slowly so that we feel the ground. So we're really getting that connection to the ground here, getting our stability from the ground. And if you can't articulate the heel and then the rest of the foot, bring the foot down and notice the sensation from the ground. Now, if we're on the chair and seated, we're just going to do the same thing. So it's exactly the same. And you can use your hands here to help you as well if you have difficulty moving your legs. So you could even lift the right foot up, heel down, then the rest of the foot. Move over to the left. The left one comes up and then comes down. So let's all go together now. So all together, ground through the feet. Lift through the crown of the head. Bring the right foot forwards. Foot down, slowly and gently. Left foot comes forwards, comes up. And down, slowly and gently. Right foot comes up. And forwards and down, left foot comes up, comes forward and down. And now bring the feet together, standing tall in our mountain pose, grounding through the feet, lifting through the crown of the head, lifting through the lower belly, Chest is lifted, the shoulders draw down into Tadasana, our mountain pose. So the arms are down the side of your body or wherever feels comfortable. You can have the palms out or in, whatever's comfortable for your body. And here again, we're going to bring some movement and breath together and I'll demonstrate what you can do in this position. So it's going to be moving the arms and we're going to lift the arms up as we inhale 
and as we exhale, we'll bring the hands back down. So the options here are you can keep one hand down, one arm down, if, if that is what needs to happen, you can do that. So it can lift on the inhale, down on the exhale. So you can bring the one hand down to prayer at the chest and visualize this arm moving. You can lift both arms and to wherever is comfortable for your body, palms together and down through center. Or there's the option, if the arm um, has got some movement there, you could always clasp the fingers or hold the hands and use your good arm to move the affected arm. So you could always lift in this way and down through center. Okay, so let's begin. So on your next inhalation, or we'll lift. And on the exhale, we come down through center. Inhale to lift. Down through center, grounding through the feet. One more time, lift. And down through center, really nice. Release the hands down. So we're going to do a balanced posture. Don't panic, it's gonna be fine. So if you're seated, you can stay seated, but come towards the edge of your chair. So just bring yourself forward in your chair. And if you're standing, I want you to root down through both of your feet. And if you have a chair nearby, you could always hold onto the back of your chair. Uh, or you could use the wall, anything that you've got nearby to gain your balance. So we're grounding down through both feet. Now, take, start to take the weight slightly into the right leg. So if you're standing, the weight comes slightly into the right leg and we're going to lift onto the ball of the left foot. So they come onto the ball of the left foot. And then the knee turns out to the side and the heel can come just against the standing leg. So if you're seated, we're in this position. If you're standing, we are, you can use a chair, grounding down through the foot, come onto the ball, open out to the side, and we pop the heel just next to the standing leg so that we've got a, a base. And this is our tree posture. Rikshasana. You can bring the hands to prayer at the chest. You can use one hand. Find a steady place to gaze. So really focus on a steady place to gaze within your room. Lift up out of the right hip. Lift through the crown of the head. If you want to challenge your balance at all, if you're standing, you can always lift the toes gently off the mat for the left foot. So keep the heel on to the side of the right leg and you can lift the toes. So it's your choice. There's that option there for you. So release the leg. You might want to give the legs a little bit of a shake. So just shake them out and we'll do the other side. So ground down through the left foot now and take the weight into the left leg. Come onto the ball of the right foot. Turn the, toe, the knee out, sorry. Bring the heel against the left leg. Bring the hands to prayer at the chest. Find your steady place to gaze. lifting through the crown of the head. And now notice, how does your breath feel? How does your breath feel?
and releasing from the in, releasing the hands down. And again, you can give your legs a little shake. And now bring the hands to your hips. And we're going to take a forward fold. So if you have any issues with um, blood pressure, don't drop the head below your heart. So you'll just come halfway down if you've got any issues there. So lifting through the chest and we're hinging from the hips here. So bring the chest and the head forwards. And if you're standing, keep a bend to the knee and fold from the hip. And if you are staying halfway, you can bring your hands onto your thighs for support. So you can stay here or you can lower all the way down if there's no issues with blood pressure. So your choice, but keep a nice bend to the knees, support your knees, support your back. And if you're seated, you can fold, fold down. But again, if there is issues with blood pressure there, don't fold too far. Now, if you're seated, press into the thighs, lift yourself back to a seated position or upright position. If you're standing, I'd like to invite you to come back down onto your mat. So take your time, find your way back down to your mat in, a safe way that feels comfortable for you. So you'll just come back down to seated. So if you're in the chair, again, we're gonna bring ourselves forwards in the chair, lifting tall. And if you're on the ground, I'd like you to bring your feet so they're flat on the mat and the knees are bent. So the knees are gonna be pointing towards the ceiling. And you can have them quite far away from you, the feet. They don't have to be really tucked in. So you can take the feet away, but the knees are bent. And now if you're on the ground, bring your feet and your knees together and then widen the knees. So drop the knees out to the side and the soles of the feet will come together. Now, if you're on the chair, come up onto the balls of the feet, widen the knees. One hand to the chest, one hand to the belly for both positions. Lift through the crown of the head. Come back to your breath. here again you can close your eyes or drop your gaze as you focus on the breath you can always just have one hand on the chest or one hand on the belly if that feels more comfortable for you Now bring the hands onto the outside of the thighs, draw the knees back together and drop the feet down. And now I'd like to invite you to come into our final relaxation, so our final Shavasana. So if you're on the ground, come to lying down on your back, knees bent, feet flat or legs out long. If you're seated, you can stay seated in the chair or you can move yourself to your sofa, your bed, or onto the ground so that you can fully relax in this position. And if you wanted um, a blanket uh, to keep warm, a pillow underneath the back of your head, then grab anything that you need to now to make your way into our final relaxation for our final Shavasana. 
So allow your body to release and relax into the ground. And again, take your time to find your way here. Allow your body to settle. Allow your breath to settle. And now bring your awareness down to your feet. Draw your awareness to your feet and feel within your feet. Notice any sensations and feelings within your feet. And now drawing your awareness up to your ankles and your lower legs. So your ankles, your lower legs, noticing and feeling the sensations there. And now moving up to your knees and your thighs, feeling within your knees and within your thighs. Notice and feel the sensations. And we notice without judgment, so we're offering ourselves kindness and compassion. And now your hips your pelvis, feeling within your hips and your pelvis. And now moving up to your lower belly, the stomach area. This is where we tend to hold on to our emotions. So what do you notice here? What comes up for you in this area? What do you feel? Take a moment to notice and to feel. And now move into your chest, your heart centre. Offering yourself compassion as you feel within your chest. Offering yourself kindness. And then move into your arms, your upper arm, your lower arm, your hands and your fingers, feeling within the whole of your arms, the hands and your fingers, noticing the sensation, feeling within. And moving round to your back, Feel your back against the ground or against the back of your chair. Your lower back, the middle part of your back and your upper back. Can you allow yourself to lean into the support beneath or behind your back? Feel your back releasing into the ground or into your chair. Move into your shoulders and your neck. This is where we tend to hold on to tension. Can you bring softness here? Can you allow softness into your shoulders, into your neck? 
What do you feel in this area of your body? And now move into your head. So feel the back of your head supported by the ground if you're on the mat. Feel within your head and know that this is a safe space for you to explore, to be curious. So allow yourself to feel the sensations and then offer yourself kindness and compassion. There's no judgment here. And now moving round to your face, your jaw, your cheek, your eye, your eyebrow centre, and your forehead. Feel the whole of your face. Please bring softness here. Releasing the jaw. Moving out the eyebrows, the forehead. And now bringing your awareness to the whole of your body. The whole of your body. The whole of your body. Notice and feel the whole of your body. Feel your breath as it moves through your body. Offer yourself kindness here, compassion. We're all survivors here. Our bodies have done amazing things for us. So offer yourself compassion. Our bodies are all amazing for what they have done for us to get to this point. So now as we draw our Shavasana to a close, I'd like to invite you to bring some movement into your body. You can wiggle the fingers or the toes, just some gentle movement, maybe rotating the wrists or the ankles, and then taking a stretch. So stretching the body, stretching, waking the body, waking the body and stretching your body in any way you need to. If you're lying on the ground, then roll onto one side. Take a moment here. If you're on the sofa, maybe you'd like to come into a seated position now. If you're on the ground, come into a seated position too. And we'll end our session with some gratitude. So you can bring the hands to prayer at your chest. Take a bow and thank yourself for taking this time to practice. For taking this time with your body to feel and to offer it compassion. So thank yourself. And thank you for practicing with me. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. I feel like I want to talk very quietly now, <laughs> so not to disturb anyone who's sort of getting uh, back to reality after that session. I feel very grounded. I'd love to hear wow. how people are feeling in the chat. I know um, if someone has got one sided difficult to join in with exercise sessions and so I love that you shared about having compassion for your body that it might not actually do the things you want it to do yet have you got any other guidance or advice for people who perhaps find, found that quite challenging I 
find it challenging myself. Um, it's something that for me personally, I've always struggled with offering myself kindness and compassion and it doesn't come naturally to me. Um, what I do is an amazing practice. It's a loving kindness meditation. And now you might, a lot of people might've heard about loving kindness meditations and there's certain phrases that you say, may I be happy, may I be well, um, may I be free from suffering. There's certain phrases that you use during a loving kindness meditation. And now what I do when I teach a loving kindness meditation is that I alter the phrase slightly and I soften it. And instead of saying, may I be happy, because that might be quite a stretch for some people, I say, may I allow myself to move towards happiness? And by altering the phrase slightly, it makes it a little bit more accessible. And it just, it invites you to take those small baby steps because that's what everything, that's what it's about really. It's all baby steps that you need to take. And by doing that, it's allowed me personally to offer myself that compassion and work towards acceptance um, of where I am in this moment um, and coming into the present moment. So I think that's such a, a good practice to use as the loving kindness meditation, definitely. I think that's lovely. I think that's so important as well. Yeah. I have a lovely comment here that I'm um, never before this lady, but this has switched me on. I can feel myself again. Thank you. And I think, wow. That's perfect that's that's exactly what I wanted this session to do so that for me is such an amazing thing because that's what we all want really we just want to come home to ourselves you know we spend every day with ourselves um and we just want to be safe and feel at home there and that's what for me that's what my yoga practice does it allows me to come back to myself that's lovely. Now we had one question uh, that was sent in before the session. So we'll do that now. And we've had a few that have yeah. come in during. So this okay. one says, I would like to improve my strength and balance. What would be of exercise to achieve this? So strength and balance, you want to be looking at your core muscles. So it's all about the core muscles. So there's lots of different things. There's lots of different yoga postures you can do for strength and balance. Um, there is the one that we did today for our tree posture, which is a great one for balance. Also not a yoga posture at all, but this is just a little thing that I always do for myself, for my balance. I stand on one leg while I'm brushing my teeth. I'll just put that out there. Um, I, <laughs> the way I do my teeth, I do one, one, like one lot of teeth with one leg and then the other lot with the, the other leg. So that really helps with balance as well. So just something as simple as that. And I think the fact that I've put some balance into a routine that I do every day makes it then a habit. So I, it's now, now I've formed that habit that I do. So that's really good. But you want to, it's all about the core muscles for balance and for, and, and for strength as well. That's where everything comes from is the core. So if you can do, and when I say core, it's not about doing crunches. Um, it's about stability. So you're really looking at ones where if you want to be on all fours, um, so you could come on to, I'll just demonstrate something for you. So you could use that out of the way. Come on to all fours. A lot of people think that you might need to do plank positions, but you don't necessarily need to do those either. You could lift the leg and lower. This is stabilizing your core and your hips. So you could lift and lower the leg and you could even keep the leg straight and do dips. And if you really want to challenge yourself, you could lift the leg and lift the opposite arm. And that is such a good exercise for, for the core and strengthening. And that's really what you need when, um, when you're working on strength and balance, if that helps. Useful. Thank you, Anna. We're all gonna be brushing our teeth tonight. <laughs> and <laughs> the good thing thing. About doing it, The good thing about doing that is that you've got the sink there, mm -hmm. so you can hold on to the sink as well if you've not got your balance. So it's, there's, it's something that's stable there as well for yeah. you. So that's why I like doing that way. That's 
it doesn't feel like such an effort, does it? Uh, <sighs> there's another question here, and I don't know if this is more of a physio question, but I'll ask you and okay. just feel okay. free to say if it it's not. Um, it thanks you for the session. They said, do you have any suggestions as to how to decrease high and spasticity? My affected side gets really tight, even when I make very small movements. Mm, I think it, obviously physio would definitely be able to, to look at that for you. Um, but I would say it's all about like stretching the muscle. Um, so I think stretching would really help. Um, but it depends on which uh, where it is in the body um, and yeah a physio would definitely be able to help with with that type of thing because um, I think it probably is more related to physio exercises um, but yoga can also really help it can like yoga can really sit alongside a good physio routine that you've got as well um, and it can really enhance what you do with your physio as well so definitely speak to your physio and see what they say but I would also say get in some good stretches in and I know yoga practice as well would definitely help as well. Sorry, having problems on meeting myself there. Um, we've got a few more on the Q&A um, and one is about shoulder pain. Um, can you ask Anna if there is a yoga posture that would help with post stroke shoulder pain? So it was, I suppose, depending on where the pain is, um, whether it's front or back, um, I would say there's a couple of different things that you could possibly do here. Because again, it would be, our yoga postures stretch the body. So stretching through um, the shoulders would possibly be helpful, um, but to not stretch too far. So there's a, there's a couple of different things that you could do, like movement wise, you could place the hands on your shoulders and rotate the elbows. This will really stretch through the back of the shoulders. Um, so that could help depending on, like I say, where, where the pain is. It's, I think the important thing is, is to work the muscles, but not work them too much because we still need, we still need to keep our body moving and, and flexible and it needs to still move. So when we stay for stay stiff for too long, then it, it, it isn't good for the body. So definitely bring some movement in. So you could do that and you can really stretch the other way as well. So you can, it's really simple just to either rotate that way or rotate that way. And it depends, it opens that way or it opens the back, depending on which way you go. So that's really helpful. And if you wanted like a, a static stretch, there is a, a posture called um, eagle arms, which can be quite, can look really complex and complicated, but you can really break it down into different sections. So if you brought your arms in front of you and you slide your elbows together, this can really give a good stretch around the back of the shoulders. And then you could stay here. This could be one, one part of eagle arms, or you could lift, the arms and you can even wrap the hands so it's really um progressive movement here so you could progress from just doing this and moving the arms across then when you feel better it can move into something else as well so there's a progressive movement there um so yeah it kind of it obviously would depend on what the issue is within the shoulder but there is diff definitely different things that you could could work with Brilliant, Anna. I'm sure that would be really helpful. Another question is, is there a yoga position that may help with indigestion or trapped wind? Yes, there is. Let me show you. It's actually called wind relieving posture. <laughs> um, so lying on your back. So lying down, bring the knees in towards the chest. Give the knees a hug and release. So hug in. So this is really good for relieving wind. And if you've got indigestion as well, you could place a pillow underneath the head so that it's not so, uh, it's not straight down on the ground. So to give you a little bit of lift. So that's a really good one that you can use. Everyone's problems here, Anna. This is 
Fantastic. <laughs> um, and now the last question, which I think a lot of people who've joined in today will be really interested in, is mm. how access to yoga group tailored for stroke survivors specifically? So have you got, um, I know you do some online yourself, uh, so I don't know if you want to share a bit about that and I can put a link to your website in the chat box as you do. Yes, uh, so I've recently just rearranged all of my yoga offerings. So the only thing I offer now is yoga for stroke survivors. That's it, um, because I feel like our community really needs this. But for me, it's been such, a, such an amazing practice and it's just helped me so much. I think back to where I was when I first came out of hospital to now and it's just such a massive difference. And it's my yoga practice that has really helped me with this recovery. And I was lucky, um, my movements all came back relatively quickly, um, but what didn't come back relatively quickly was my sense of safety, um, all of the, I had, a, I have uh, like anxiety and things like that around obviously having another stroke. So I really feel like this community really needs yoga and that's why I've now created all of my offerings around stroke survivors so I have starting from November I have a Wednesday evening class which is through zoom 7 till 8 p.m so it's a nice wind down after the day um, so it's again it would be a class like this one so mixed abilities where I'll use a chair the mat we'll use everything um, and then I've also created a class for, again, it starts in November on the Saturday, which is a Saturday morning class, 9.30 till 10.30. And this is a little bit different. It's a yoga circle. So it's a safe space for you guys to come to chat. We'll talk about some yoga, some yoga practices that can help, but it's more of a community session where we can all come together talk through any issues get support um, and then I'll offer some yoga practices to kind of help with the issues that arise on on the day um, so I've got those two classes that I offer and then I also offer a um, a program um, which is all pre-recorded so it's called the life after stroke program so it's a six-week program um, so all of the classes that I show on there they're all pre-recorded that you can do in your own time and then each week you have a session with me where we talk about the week and the focus for that week um, and you get support from me that you need for, for that week um, and then I'm also looking at setting up one-to-one -one sessions as well so if you wanted to work one-to-one -one with me then we can do that as well so I've got quite a few things few offerings that I'm so excited about and it's all all happening in November so I'm very excited. That's brilliant and then there's lots of options like you say for people I have popped yeah. Anna's uh, web uh, site address into the chat so do check that out and I think it's so needed isn't it and I think often mm. if you're living a life in pain or you've had a huge health event your a lot of your time is spent zoning out of your body and not trusting it yeah. and not centering yeah. in it and so I think what your practice does is amazing and actually trying to rebuild that that trust with your body yeah. and, and to listen to it again and and, and make sure yeah. you're checking in so thank you so much Anna that was absolutely wonderful thank you for having me and do check out Anna's website she's got lots of exciting things coming up in November and um, we have some fantastic sessions coming up the conference continues on we've got a session on fatigue hosted by my lovely colleague Janice um tomorrow and there'll be a panel of survivors just talking about coping mechanisms that's helped them sort of cope with fatigue and then we've got the stroke survivor meetup in the afternoon where we uh, our lovely Sheila will be there and you can have a chat with fellow stroke survivors so I want to thank you all uh, Anna again one who's tuned in for being part of this wonderful community um, and I hope to see you all again tomorrow and have a very restful evening now you've been moving um, all day so we'll see you soon take care Thanks, guys